Okay. Itam Exkanatani. Good morning. It is about 10 o'clock in the a.m. on Saturn Day, May 7th, 2022, in the lunar cycle Matsi Kapisaki Sum, the frog moon, our first summer lunar cycle. And I have a brief opportunity to spend a few hours out here before we start getting deluged with rain. So while I had some other commitments that I should be attending this morning, I could not justify doing anything but spending time in the coolies and seeing what's up. And this is odd right here. I've kind of been watching for a few minutes this morning and this goose continues to go up here and sit on this nest that as we know has already incubated out and uh, there are goslings or there were goslings at least at some point. I wonder if the goslings have survived. I wonder if this is a new goose scoping out this island as a potential uh, nesting ground. It's Beaver Lodge Island. <laughs> no sign of the goslings yet so far and I've already kind of scoped around all along the west bank here. Um, so unless they're kind of hidden out on the wet meadows which is entirely possible but perhaps I'll have to go out that way and have a look. I would really like to see goslings today. Um, it'd be nice to see bull snakes today as well. But I don't know if it's going to be quite warm enough for them. We had kind of a tragedy yesterday as um, we start going into the snake migration um, period in Binuclium Park on the north side of town uh, I got called to a snake situation yesterday morning where there was a mature bull snake lumped up dead on the road uh, just a little ways down from the dog run so I picked up that snake, threw it in the back of my truck, continued off toward the baseball diamonds, and uh, not far along, I seen off the side of the road another dead bull snake, uh, even larger than the, than the one I had picked up, uh, more mature, and I picked that one up, threw it in the back of my truck. So two... Uh, you know, six foot bull snakes basically, five and six foot bull snakes, uh, nice breeding age snakes, uh, dead right off the hop, day one of the snake migration. Um, just the evening before I had had my first rattlesnake call, and uh, yeah, things are obviously underway. I don't know that I'll get any calls today or uh, over the weekend here, we're gonna have a temperature drop we're going to get into some rains, and that's why I really need to get out today, uh, this morning, and do what I can to take some phenological notes, you know, for my classes and for my, uh, for my studies. <laughs> um, and it's going to be my only opportunity, so I'm taking it. Gosh darn it. I do see in the forest, and, and uh, when we get closer, I'll show you, it does look like there are poplars and cottonwoods um, leafing out, which is cool. We have here the, uh, what are they called? Lens potted hoary cress, one of our local mustards, and leafing out along the west bank here, of course, is the uh, 
buck brush. So, yeah, got to get out and take some notes. Um, see if I can find goslings, see if I can find bull snakes, see what is hell else is happening. I'd like to go up one of, up and down one of the coolies so I can check out the slopes a little bit and uh, stretch these legs that have been too bound indoors <laughs> most of the week. Um, I did have a, a crazy call yesterday morning. I should just show that footage uh, out somewhere near the airport there's a property where uh they've been having raccoon issues i guess and oh, i found the goslings hold on i'll show you this is very cool i had come this way before and somehow missed them but they're here look This is what I wanted to see. One, two, three, four, five, I count. How cute. Yeah, I'm looking forward to following these guys. Progression through adulthood. We'll see their whole story this summer. Should they survive this stage where they are very much in danger of attack by larger pike? Question is, how many gosling, gobbling sized pike do we have left in Spopikimi? I don't know, the pelicans came through couple weeks ago and I think they probably cleaned up a share but there's still some here for sure there always is waters are so low though so low yeah this is this is perfect <laughs> pheasant in the background Yeah, so I'm assuming this is the goslings from the beaver lodge nest. What do we have a sixth? We have a sixth. Six goslings. Good size brood. That's awesome. Yeah, I've just been kind of kneeling here on the bank, harvesting a little bit of this lens potted hoary cress. And I never like to take a lot of anything that I'm harvesting. You know, we're really not supposed to be harvesting here in the nature park at all, but you know, people do. And I don't know about the not supposed to be anyway, because we, you know, we're part of the nature. <laughs> so one of the questions I'm always asking uh, to the plants that I'm harvesting really is like, what can I do? What can I give in reciprocation for what I take? And I've had some different answers over the years from plants, you know, or at least the thoughts that come to mind when I ask the plants that question, what my next thoughts are. And, um, in this case, I just I think I just learned something, 
or was reminded of something as I was pulling some of these I was reminded that plants when they're growing you know in like tight clusters and stuff um, they don't grow as well as if they had a little bit of room you know if you if we take you know some out of that cluster and give others just a little bit more room a little bit more sun exposure I mean this is what gardeners do all the time right they seed but then you have to kind of pare down and so as human gardeners you know out here harvesting uh, that's something we can do for the plants as we're doing something for ourselves so just a just a cool idea that came to mind there's still the two incubating nests here on the wide south pool. They might even have a week yet to go. I don't know if there's any others hidden in the reeds that I don't normally notice. What is this? Oh, uh, this is honeysuckle all leafed out like this. And of course the currants, which are starting to flower at the Wilderness Park. I would imagine some of them are starting to flower here as well. Oh yes. Oh yes. Here we go. Yellow flowers. I, I can't tell the difference between the golden, black, and red varieties of current until their fruit actually you know, turns. Before that, they all look the same, they all flower the same. Seemingly, to my eye. <laughs> Maybe I'm not looking close enough. Just hear robins going off. Maybe a little sparrow in here too. getting warm. Could be snaky. Maybe we'll have a look. Um, while I make my way in that direction, I'll show you a little footage from the other morning. I had a kind of a crazy uh, call out by the airport. There was this property where they had set up some traps for raccoons that they meant to kill. You know, and they, so they'd set leg traps and then they were going to shoot the raccoons. Um, but two leg traps caught skunks. And so I had to go hands-on and, and uh, extract the skunks from those traps that I'd never used before. <laughs> so I wasn't exactly sure how they functioned. Um, but yeah, I'll show you that footage. Um, and then we'll make our way up to the snake dens. Got the um, skunk trap? Yeah, just in the back here. Ooh, you can smell them from here. Well, but you're probably smelling me. <laughs> My, uh... <laughs> oh, oh, gee, we two. got... We got, uh... There's two Oh, oh he's in a leg and trap. Oh, no. You know what? This isn't even the skunk we were this talking about. This is our about. cat. I've been looking for her. Oh, God. And she probably stinks. Um... So there's actually another skunk over there. So there's two skunks. Oh, goodness. Are they both in leg traps? They're yeah. both in leg traps. Holy shit. Okay. Ugh, this is so frustrating. That, that doesn't make it easy. <laughs> I was hoping it was just box traps. Well, and play kitchen. I'm gonna Krista, get careful so you don't get sprayed. Yeah, I'm going yeah. to get so sprayed. I just want to let the cat out so that she can be out. Yeah. Um, 
I'm sorry. Take this a is... picture so your mom knows. I don't have my phone on with you. Uh, yeah, I do. This is very frustrating. <laughs> I'm very upset that she left these traps when she's gone. Yeah. And also, I'm very upset that she's killing these raccoons anyway. It, I don't think is right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> go ahead. Come on, Flossie. Come on, Flossie. Go, go. Come on. Yeah, you are free. Don't go to the skunk. She's like, my friend. Go, go, go. go don't don't go to the skunk. Come on, babe. Come on. Come here. Lossie. Lossie. Don't go to the skunk. Come here. Thank you. Well, this should be... This should be fun. I just don't get how they get caught in the lake. Because I think there's food in there. Oh. I'm going to go inside. Let me see if I got drugs. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to get bit too. I didn't even look at the Do you know how this trap releases? I have absolutely no idea, and I'm very frustrated because my mother did not let us know that these were even set. Yeah. I just haven't worked with one of these traps, so I'm not sure. Oh, oh there that we go. Oh, that's good. Okay, you're free. Do you think it's okay? Do you think it's hurt or? Yeah, it's hurt. Um, do you think it'll be okay? Well, hopefully, most animals can get along as a tripod, you know, if they. Okay. But it's hopefully it's just sprained and not. Yeah. Right, broke. <laughs> Where's this other one? Uh, right over here, under the tree. Okay. Hey bud, I am here to release you, so be nice to me. Yeah, I'm here to release you. Don't spray me. There you go. Whew. Wow. <laughs> well, we're not to the snake dens yet, but I very much wanted to show what's going on down here along the outskirts of the owl wood. We have white butterflies uh, not sure the species yet visiting the Otsiki the golden bean these uh, golden bean are important um, they're kind of a one of the phenological plants that was paid close attention to 
in Blackfoot tradition. Um, what is this plasticky thing over here? Is it broken glass? Oh. Yeah, I guess it's glass, perhaps. Where is this pheasant? There he is. What's up, buddy? Ah, sir. <laughs> um, yeah, the golden bean, Otsikin. When it blooms, it was the time for hunting buffalo calves. So it's connected to the story of Miochbokoix, which is a sun and moon story about children who didn't get their calf robes. It's like not getting the new Air Jordans. And they felt cheated and they uh, complained to the sun about their parents. And the sun kind of decided to, to uh, put the humans in their place and really, really, uh, baked the earth that season such to the point that the dogs had to um, dig for water the people had to find you know places to dig into the coolies to, to escape the heat and uh, eventually it was the dogs howling at the moon crying to the moon for help that uh, to appeal to the moon <laughs> that why is why are all the animals being punished too when it's just the humans that uh, were not sp spoiling their children best they could and um, so the moon turned things around but that story is uh, it has complex versions that speak to the summer lunar cycles and when it's drawn uh, in the shape of Miochbokoix which is the Pleiades constellation it's also representative of the sun and the summer and the and the uh, the lunar cycles of the summer anyway <laughs> lots of the Otsik in the in bloom this is uh, also a important ingredient in the um, fertilizer for traditional tobacco planting. Um, what else am I forgetting? You know, and it's typically in bloom. Oh yes, the bumblebees, Damoics, are really connected to these plants. Oh, he was just here. See if he uh, makes another appearance. Saw me and dashed. Saw my camera turning his way or her way. <laughs> yeah, these these are uh, typical flowers of the first summer moon. But the first summer moon is not always the frog moon. As it is this year, it's usually called Apischischitzatos, the flower moon. And, um, or even Otsikinyatos, the moon of this particular flower. White tails, the tail waggers. They're all 
all in the bush here. And I'm curious about what it is that they're eating. Right when I approached, they were kind of more open. Just up in here, but I frightened them. Nature, a big fuck you at this train trestle. I like to see uh, nature giving the the finger right back. Look at this. mullion growing right off the anchor. Oh, and who do we have here? Oh, there's a little beetle or something. Now he's way over this way. Let's see if I can get him. This looks more like a like a gooseberry than a current, but I don't know. We'll have to see what what comes of it. I don't think I've actually paid much attention to that particular plant before. I want to see what this, whether this is a bee or a beetle, this thing that's attracted to the anchor here. Where did it go? Uh, maybe it has literally buzzed off. Yeah, there's a, another pheasant just up here. I seen him poking his head out a few minutes ago as the train was going by checking me out. I should climb uphill and go look at what the status of the um, Sox uh Stinging Nettle. Stinging Nettle should be coming out and that's another plant that if you want to harvest, um, good to harvest before the, the flowers actually pop, you know. Anyhow. I don't know if you can see that in there. But the garter snakes even seem to be saying it's too cold today. Right tucked down in the hole they are. Not seeing any up above this yet, but I'll look a little bit more. Check on the bull snakes as well. There is one. There is one garter snake. He's in here somewhere. Maybe he slipped down a crack. Check this out. The thing about garter snakes when they're not by the dens, their protection is they use their, their slenderness and their stripes 
to, you know, quickly slither through the grass away from the threat, but then stop still. Absolute still in hopes that you don't see them again. And then if they think that you do, they'll take another little shot. They don't go far. Just go far enough to throw your eyes off and then still themselves and be become the landscape again. You know, if I didn't know this guy was here, I would probably not notice him. Just walking along in the grass. You know. And he's gone. <laughs> See me waving my arms. Skunk brushes flowering. I think I noted that before in my last video, perhaps. But there's also a little mystery here. I'm noticing in this particular skunk brush, there's a lot of these little sticks. Nicely bark chewed off of them. Um, I wonder if the sticks are bits of skunk brush itself but cold by maybe a, maybe a rabbit, mountain cottontail, something like that. Um, I'm not seeing any cottontail dung though, as yet, but I'm certainly seeing a lot of these sticks. Could it be some other kind of rodent. It's not a porcupine because these sticks are small and there's no like space in here for the porcupine to fit. And the teeth are just whoops, small, small, whatever's eating this. Maybe even too small to be a, a rabbit, to be honest. I'm going to look at other skunk brush and see if I notice anything similar. I haven't ever before and I have looked at skunk brush a time or two so I wonder if it's this is just a particularly special feeding spot for one rodent and it, if it would make sense to set up a camera trap. There's a little bit of the sticks here, but I'm not seeing them as thoroughly throughout this bush. I don't know. The investigation will continue, but it is a curious little artifact. Hmm. Somewhat curious about this as well. Is that a live pelican just asleep? Just a floating down the river? Is that what they do or is that a carcass? I'm betting carcass. We got avian flu going around like mad. I even had an inquiry as I've been walking here on my Facebook. Somebody asked me, uh, they said they found a magpie dead in their backyard. No indication of trauma. What should they do? Who do they call? I really don't know. I told them fish and wildlife.
Huh. Here we go. Mr. Angry Pants. Iksokapi Kitsinos. Good to see you. Even though you're not happy to see me. I was just about to start a video talking about how I had looked at about 20 of these skunk brush along this slope and not seeing any other indication of uh, that kind of rodent activity with the little sticks. And here I'm coming up this way, getting ready to take out my camera and I run into the bull snake. Not where I expected to find it. Already away from the den. And quite upset at me for uh, showing up when I did. Sorry. I will leave you alone. <laughs> Tracking this little wasp that's visiting these flowers. And I think I just got out tracked. There's all these very tiny uh, local bees who are not going to show themselves to us on video. <laughs> getting at these skunk brush flowers. Little tiny bees and a little thread like little wasp. But they don't like me here. I've been seeing these bees stopping on the sand here. I don't know what they're, if they're just warming up or if they're actually gathering. There we go, here's an example. Let's see if we can see what he's up to. I don't know if they're gathering mud. It's a possibility or if it's just a warm-up opportunity. Hmm. I really can't tell from my little viewfinder either. Hopefully when I look at my laptop I'll be able to see a little bit more what's going on. I was just hanging out on the slope here thinking I wonder if it makes a difference whether you're a skunk brush uh, kind of in the shade of the high level bridge because that first skunk brush I visited was, you know, just against the high level bridge here, very close to it, in the shade of it, kind of. So, I wonder if I'll find any more evidence. If it's rabbits, I should. I'm gonna go up this way, up toward the top of the bridge too, to get at that sock soyatsis. Our bee has, has uh, vacated. But hopefully, from that video, be able to see something. I don't know. Let us climb. Here we go again. Another bee. So it appears to be maybe 
pollen already gathered sitting in the dirt doing what I get in as close as I can and steady as I can here come on camera Jeez. ah fuck sorry excuse the language why this camera's not focusing quick. Maybe because it's like a $300 cheapo camera, but I have high expectations. We're getting there. Climbing always sucks. So we're up here. Basically the Cooley Rim right there. Heritage. And I'm starting to think, oh no, what if I'm way early for socks or yachts, which I might be. I mean, it's no doubt coming out of the ground, but it's probably not harvest size yet. And I'm just climbing today to get some exercise. Well, I wanted to go up the rim anyway to look at stuff like this, hey? Eucinian, one of our wild parsleys. Oh, and there's a bumblebee, Namu. Hunt's bumblebee just came by. Thinking about landing on this flower and saw me. Um, yeah, this is a wild parsley species. We have about three of them, different kind of Eucinian wild parsleys in Lethbridge. And then there's a couple more out on the blood reserve, and as you go out to the mountains, even more. Um, tastes like that parsley garnish you get at the restaurants, you know? But um, I normally harvest it for the root. It's got like a starchy biscuit root. And I've got a little bit of harvest on already. I was saying in my video the other night, but not enough. I'd like to get more. All right. So down in here is typically where the nettle grows, or where I start seeing it in abundance. But where are my nettles today? They are here. Ah. And perfectly good, even at this stage, for salad. But the trick is how to harvest without being very stung up. I'm already getting stung. Come in at the ground, find the stem, pop it off down there at the ground. Down here, Soxoyatsis is pretty much doesn't have nothing to uh, to barb you with up here. You're gonna get it. You're gonna get it anyway. I got some already on my knuckles. Um, that is the pain you have to bear. And again, this is a plant that you can see here is growing densely. And if we want to do something good by this plant, we could leave. You know a pinch of tobacco and and do it symbolically we could leave a pinch of tobacco and help them out a bit by uh, by uh, thinning them thinning I think was the the word I was looking for before hey thin them so that some of them are exposed to more light than they would be not thinned and they grow healthier bigger plants and these ones I can uh, cook up it's like a spinach almost I can make tea 
This is good stuff. Sock Soyatsis. It has, it's one of those plants that's useful in all stages. And when it's young like that, like this, that's when you get the leaves as a kind of a, a food plant. Um, later on you can get the seeds. It's almost like a hemp protein, you know? But once it's, once it's gone to flower, you don't want to take it for the leaves. They get kind of uh, something in them crystallizes and it's not good for digestion. But then you can use the stalks later on, these things, um, for their fiber, for rope. It's not the best in this season, but even in this season, I could make a fiber cordage with this old stem. It's better earlier in the winter to harvest, or even to harvest when you're getting the seeds. You can harvest it for the stems at the same time. Just discard the leaf stuff. In any case. Yeah, most of the sock soyatsis here is still just way too young. Way too young. I mean, it's, I mean, it's it's harvestable, but we just wait <clears throat> a couple of weeks, and you get lots more yield for the time taken. I'm gonna bring a little bit home anyway, so I can have some nettle tea, and then I can eat the uh, greens that I've used to make the tea. I like to just mix a little bit of butter in with them after I've made tea with them after I've seeped them, you know, and then, uh, well, maybe I'll actually live show that when I'm home, but maybe not. <laughs> this could just be a, a walk and talk video. I think that's probably best. Check out the view I've got up here. Pretty nice, pretty nice, can't complain. Gonna go down this way. I disturbed a red-tailed hawk who was sitting on the ground doing something up there as I dropped into this little coolie. A um, couple of plants I've been noticing that I should mention the wild tarragon just has its leaves coming up. That is, you know, kitchen spice. Once the actual uh, spicy parts of the plant are available on the stalk, these basil leaves don't taste like much. And then over here, we got uh, prairie smoke, people call it in English. Um, it's got a few different names, but in Blackfoot, so yes. And uh, it's an important medicinal plant. The root is used like a very strong tincture of the root. Um, can be drunk as a, as a tonic for um, like if you have a bad cough or stomach issues. There's better cough medicine. I wouldn't use it for cough medicine, but if you have stomach issues, um, strong tonic. Strong tincture uses a tonic for that uh, drink for the stomach issue. Same thing can be used as kind of a throat wash gargled with uh, for sore throats. And what else? I think there is another use for the root that I'm not recalling. But yeah, it's a it's an important medicine. Um, not much value for anything else, but worth collecting a few roots for when you're feeling sick to have in your first aid kit.
Yksi auto yksi. The tail waggers again. Look how low the spring is. This is the spring that provides river water to the pond. Just about dried up because that's where the water table is. It's good we have a couple of days of rain coming. But uh, I think it's going to be too little. We need a lot more. Ah, thing of beauty this is. The nice, thick asparagus stalk. Ah oh, yes, juicy. By far, by far tastier than any asparagus you ever gonna get at the store. I've seen some people over here harvesting this morning. I was worried they might have picked all the asparagus. And I wouldn't get to taste any this season, but not the case. I'm glad about that. I'm not going to over harvest it at all either. But just the taste now and then. Here's another, another one poking out of the ground right now. That stalk right there. Sting of nettles kind of nailing my fingers here and there. I'm going to eat you too. I was just checking on these asparagus plants here. You can see this one's got this nice long stalk already almost about to flower, which is probably why those other people passed it by. Pretty sure they came by here. <coughs> it's also interesting to note that right under here there's a nest a duck nest or a single duck egg as it were I wouldn't be surprised if I run into some more ducks on my way out here each of the waterfowl has a very different strategy for its way of nesting and succeeding in nesting and such um, some of them are close to others you know the geese always look at, at islands eh? or island like things little peninsulas even uh, you know I've seen them nest on top of round bales I've seen them nest even take over hawk nests uh, you know they might nest on the ledge of a building but their preference is islands, and I think all of these other things are just island substitutes. Um, the ballards and the teals, for their part, they nest a little bit later because rather than using the islands, see the goose have to use the islands because they're so conspicuous. They're not going to hide, you know, nesting anywhere else. They need at least that much um, freedom from the land-based predators you know to succeed but the ducks they're gonna rely on their camouflage a lot more and so they kind of wait until things are are a little bit further developed in the season so that they hopefully have some leaf coverage wherever they're hiding and because they're a little bit later in the season they have to pull back from the water's edge and nest you know somewhere out of the flood range because it's likely that uh, they're gonna get hit by the flood, you know, if they don't. So that's why you find duck nests in the forest here. You can find it way up on the coulee edge. Sometimes I've found it, you know, way up there in some skunk brush, but you can still see the water. It's a ways though. <laughs> that's why you have those um, mama ducks after 
the uh, ducklings are born, you know, in the city, you got these mama ducks hiking their ducklings off uh, to the waters from the nesting sites. And so they're across streets and all that kind of scary stuff. I'm just scouring around here. Maybe a few more spears. Take home one for Brit to taste. They're worth having a taste. Um, but there's not a, not enough out here for everybody uh, to come out and harvest a bunch, you know. So leave some for others and leave some to regrow and all that stuff. Okay, up, Spinix. They were not happy to see me emerging from the forest. Well, I've had a good couple of hours here. I think I'm gonna move it on out at this point saw what I wanted to see, exactly what I wanted to see, and then some. Got a nice little gardening trope message from the um, Hori Cress. <laughs> we'll step down here onto the, onto the viewing platform, the dock see what's going on aquatically if there's any water left there that close to shore <laughs> yeah it's not super impressive down here the water is so low reeds are just starting to pop up bulrushes for the season, new bulrush. A lot of them have been topped off already by the uh, muskrats feeding. Uh, let's see if I can show you an example of that. See there? Cut off. And you find the remnants laying in the water. They just like those those uh, easy chewing base. One big turtle sitting on a log. Turtles are starting to move over to the river. I'm getting more and more river reports of the turtles because the water here is just diminishing we need rain we need moisture we need the uh, less global warming or something this place sure is changing over the years